think it started. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we are a very small group. It's perfect to the idea of an interactive workshop, so don't hesitate to ask. Don't ask for support from my side if you explain something and you are not able to um, implement the same in your set system. First, uh, we planned a short introduction, but I guess most of the aspects are already mentioned here. Originally, we are um, roboticists uh, working on systems for swimming applications and driving applications, map environments and representations of uncertain knowledge is our focus. And with aquatic robotics, we support our colleagues from different departments in uh, automated measuring processes on lakes and seas. And we have a second interest, research interest, e-learning. As I already mentioned, we completely switched our strategy um, and uh, deleted all the PDFs with uh, passwords and all these things from our service and opened a setup of information to our students, to our open materials to our students for an interactive discussion uh, during the learning process. And of course, the script was one result of this uh, process. Yeah. Uh, I again introduce myself. So my name is Andre Dietrich. I'm the maintainer and uh, uh, to say core developer of Lea Script. And yeah, I worked some long time ago also with robotics, but my focus is now or mainly focus is in this language development and uh, building compilers and web technologies. So um, I somehow fell in love with the idea of creating open educational content in a very easy and as I say engaging or something uh, like this way so yeah probably just for illustrating where we come from uh, Freiburg University one of the oldest technical universities in Germany it's um, in the center south of uh, Berlin uh, center of Europe <laughs> of course and no you know very close to the resource rich area with generated uh, it's uh, yeah this is focus on resources What was the starting point? And you saw that remote laboratories are a connection point in my work and Andrew's activities. Um, this is unfortunately a German movie illustrating one of our first project, a national founded project. And here we have some small robots moving around and you are able to control them as a student from your laptop, from anywhere 24 seven hours. You can write your code directly in the browser. This was the idea. And we had um, eight of them operating in our laboratory and the students used them completely free, very flexible. And just at the end, we um, evaluated their results, their codes um, in directly in the laboratory. But the problem Andrew already mentioned was, I was not able to change any piece of task description, any piece of hints included in this very uh, yeah, huge block of code of, of the system. And here in the movie it looks perfect, it's fine, but for practical issues it would be much more helpful if we have a, another abstract representation of uh, learning materials that helps to include some interactive elements, but it's flexible to adapt its content. And that was a starting idea for Lear Script, and we, um, in the beginning in 2017, um, we used uh, or we looked for an opportunity to uh, include an interpreter for learning content in such an application. In the meantime, we left the idea of remote labs and focused on the representation of learning materials. We will now give a very short and motivating um, overview about the features and afterwards you are inviting to learn step by step how to implement the code. Uh, from our didactical idea is to have an impressive motivation 
in the first part of this session and afterwards we hopefully work through the theoretical part description elements and so on. And we will give this presentation. Thank you. I'll share this link also with you for a few seconds. Hi, I am Leah Script, a markup language and interpreter for educational content. The goal of my developers was to create an open and easy to use way to develop and distribute educational content. To our knowledge, there is no simpler way of creating quizzes and questionnaires. Probably I did a mistake by connecting the text-to-speech output. Uh, so it's a problem with the Wi-Fi. So that's a pure uh, demo, but I damn it, sorry, I just uh, made a mistake. Uh, bup, bup, bup. But we can fix this. So I didn't mark the content, which should be actually uh, spoken out loud as to be uh, represented. But we can do this like online. I just go to the Leo script uh, live editor. So there's a few notes. You will use this tool in a few uh, minutes. I create a new node. And I want to use an external resource for this. So I just include the link to my original presentation markdown content okay so i get a new link and it's just uh, the live editor referring to the original source so what happens it just loads the code within the browser from the additional source and I hi i am leah script the markup language and sorry so i want to change this so this part was missing so it was I want to, so that you get an idea. So this is the basic text. And if I want to read it out loud, I just have to give it some hints. So this is like a comment that you can speak out loud or that you can show to the audience. I will uh, show it to you in a few seconds. This was missing. And also this goal. So this piece of text should be uh, read out loud in animation step two. That would be actually a cool add-on for PowerPoint, you know, where you have the notes and it would just read the notes and the slides. Yeah. And you, you already realize that the, the idea we have a text-based representation, something like HTML or other uh, LaTeX formats, but the intention was to find a style of describing the content. Hi, I am Leah Script, the mark. On the other hand, it's necessary to have interactive elements as this reading loud text. Um, so we have to balance the capabilities of the description language and its complexity in editing, of course. Otherwise, everyone will say, hey, you have to do the studies in computer science before you can use this aspect. So this is just like, this should be appeared. This is the first part that's spoken out loud. The second one, or we start by counting from zero in this case. So we go to the features. Markdown is intended to be as easy to read and easy to write as is feasible. But unfortunately for static content only, Leah's script is based on Markdown and extends it in various ways. To our knowledge, there is no simpler way of creating quizzes and questionnaires. So if you want to solve this quiz, uh, the German article for girl is actually neuter. <laughs> it's not female, so this one we mark this with an X. And it's actually, yeah, it's the correct answer. So there's a The original goal was to create coding courses fast, but the same principles can be used to teach writing, mathematics, and music theory too. So this is just an example. You should see this later also. We will work with this. So if you have some kind of text, so with your students uh, create by themselves, and you want to analyze this, so how is the style probably? So you can do this quite easily. So we add 
additional features to extend the language. So if I click on the coding example, actually it does not code. It presents us with an overview on, uh, so the content is very difficult to read probably, and some uh, it's for actually a college freshman, or it's intended or above from the complexity, and a lot of also of different stuff. So if you're doing uh, mathematics, probably you can do some calculations. This use another extension, uh, the algebra, and you can, yeah, what's factorial of 600 or probably like this. Uh, so you can interactively code and play around with uh, different technologies or libraries that are, or services that are available within the internet. So, and you don't have to be a coder. Uh, to add this, we will show you uh, how you can implement these or add these functionalities afterwards to your course, uh, if you want so. Some these plugins are written by a community. Many teachers have specific interests, and we will see some music representations in the next example. So we have a collection of plugins that can be combined in the course code, and it's not necessary more than to reference their macros and in this way you embed existing codes specifically focused on your content directly in your document. Yeah? So, so this is just the ABC music notation if you want to compose. Uh, so it's a, actually a standard. And you get this nice feature. So it plays the music if you want to. And you can directly also, I don't know, I have no idea what I'm doing, for example, I can change the code or the notes and it should play them somehow differently. So the next step. Of course you can add any kind of multimedia content and content from other sites as well. So this might look complicated or uh, disturbing, but these are just links to pictures, to some videos, and to some uh, other uh, uh, websites or foreign websites, so that you can use like you not can not only include this images, links, multimedia, sound, and videos if you want to. Uh, just a video of Leah's script. We are working with some tables, but take some time. You can also add any kind of, if it's possible, the Lia script system tries to detect a way to embed this piece of this part from the website into your course. So, but from some cases, so it's actually a 3D simulation, you can uh, go and click onto it. So uh, it's just linking or referring to this specific website. That's it. And if the website offers such a service, you can also embed this into your Lia script content or code. Uh, it tries to uh, uh, detect different mythologies. So the first, there is a standard, it's called OEmbed, and the websites offer specific tags uh, at their meta information that tell uh, the system, of course, you can embed my uh, content, and the main part is this is how you do this. So in the first step, Leo script uh, grabs the the browser grabs the website, parses the internal uh, internal information. Is there such a meta information available? No. Then it checks its own database. Is this service somehow listed so that I can translate or embed this into my system? There are like 400 websites uh, that we included. And if this doesn't work, it at least tries to embed this as an iframe. And then it's also responsible if the source provider of the website actually allows to embed this code. So. Yeah, so if there's a flag uh, in the server configuration that I don't want to, uh, don't allow my content to be shown uh, in other websites, it cannot be included. But So you have to try it out. So, with the, But there are a lot of free and open services that provide these techniques. Ah. So the last part. So, I'm sorry, what didn't work? So, I don't know, so uh, 
the Google browser, this might be a problem, so it uses, if there is an internet connection, it tries to uh, get some... One other. document can be presented in various ways. You can use it for presentations with animation steps, read it like a textbook, or use it like an interactive screencast. Just click on the presentation button to switch between modes. So if I get to the full presentation again, so this delay might be caused due to the due to an internet uh, uh, internet connection. If there is no internet connection, Google will just uh, speak it out loud, but probably not with the highest quality. And if there is an internet connection, uh, it will try to increase the quality of the sound. But there, if you have uh, in installed in. Uh, it works from your smartphones, it even works from this feature phones, so offline they have a pretty good text-to-speech engine, so they can deliver this spoken out loud content uh, quite good and high quality. So in the ideas, just you've seen this one description of the content, and you can use it for different purposes. So we use it now for the presentation, but you can use it also like in uh, slide mode, so that the content that is spoken out loud is actually uh, Markdown is intended to be as easy to read and easy to write as visible in here. So you can click on it, it changes depending on the resolution of your device. Uh, you can make an entire uh, presentation we had, but you it's autoplay. So if you read it in textbook mode, there will no won't be no steps. So okay, this is the first animation step. I switch to another one. It just like uh, shows you all the content like as you are used to it in a plain and normal site. So what was spoken out loud before is actually now added uh, into the text uh, where you have put it into it. So your users can decide how to use your content that you've cre been creating. Uh, or you can decide in which circumstances you want to give a presentation or you want to do something else or, uh, with your content. <laughs> I have another question. Do you also have like an artificial intelligence mm. plugin? Um, so for, mm. if you, for example, have an assignment, so that's what now comes to my mind, you have the textbook and then you have like an assignment and you have to write an essay and you get a feedback on... No. That's not possible, so uh, that's probably possible. So you can connect any kind of external services if you want to, but at the moment it is just, uh, it stores uh, the entire history, the entire course within the browser. That's basically it. But there are some colleagues from Australia making experiments with automatically generated ES script courses on different topics. So they use ChatGTP for providing the basic structure of the document with some notes and then they implement the actual ideas they want to transport uh, manually. And that works already? Like yeah. Yeah, there are some yeah. Python scripts uh, generally yeah. you, you, you just yeah, add Python, it. Yeah, Python I knew, but I didn't know that the yeah, script was also supported. No, uh, but uh, you can uh, simply teach uh, ChatGPT to export or teach a Lear script syntax. So, and if you want to have quizzes and stuff like this, so you can ask it to generate it. So you teach it at first with some prompts, and afterwards it will generate the content for you in Lear script. So, it's probably. Do you want to? Yeah. What's the, what's the general idea? Just don't be. Um, shocked by the technical details. But what's the idea? We have some text documents that can be interpreted by different learning management system, systems due to the general concept of an interpreter running in your browser. No, nothing more than a huge piece of software that takes step by steps all the information, the formats, some styling information, the interactive elements, and rendering, uh, renders the website. And this can be uh, integrated in different learning management systems for uh, providing the content in a way that your students um, are familiar with. For an export, we build up some some tools that helps it to transform uh, applications if you are not interested to embed iframes or, or some similar then you can use the scorm uh, standards or similar approaches to 
generate a um, learning material package which can be applied on your system. We will illustrate this with such a very small mobile phone too. Okay, probably just to illustrate the flexibility, Andrew integrated uh, the opportunity to switch the language to, again, the piece of text that you can apply automatic translator on it. So, I'll just get back to the feature or just start with the starting point of script. So there are some like technologies you can use Google Translate, but in this case we are not translating the website, but we actually tell uh, Google which parts uh, are allowed to be translated, uh, and actually we use this also in the uh, generation of the yeah voices. So if I click, so Google is not always there. It's just like if you click on this uh, import button. Uh, it will be the code for Google Translator will be injected. So it's not that co Google is monitoring you. So uh, probably now they see that I'm doing some kind of translations. But as you see, we translated this to French. It was like Französisch and German because my browser is in German. And we can change the presentation mode again to presentation. I'll switch the sound off. On. Bonjour, je suis Liascript, un langage de balisage et un interprète pour le contenu éducatif. L'objectif de mes développeurs était de créer un moyen ouvert et facile à utiliser pour développer et distribuer du contenu éducatif. So I can switch back to textbook mode probably. Uh, Okay, this is new, just Google occupied the piece where I can switch to the next, uh, to the introduction, but we can also choose like this, so main. Shouldn't, I shouldn't use autoplay, uh, so in these settings. Uh, but as you can see, the entire document is translated instead, but not those German articles probably. So the content for German uh, teaching might be still the same in a foreign language, but um, you can mark those pieces actually that you want to have them translated or not. So they should be fixed. If you're doing a Spanish course or something like this, you can translate this same course to French or Italian or whatever. So this is the basic idea. And this is an important feature. If you yeah. um, implement courses on software development, of course you have to avoid that the English terms in your code will be replaced by French, Spanish or any other items. Um, and we spend a lot of effort uh, to separate the pieces have to be translated and without any manipulation. So now we would like to make a test. Uh, we mentioned like instant publishing without any costs, and this might be uh, this is an example probably how we our latest uh, implementation is the uh, ability to create quizzes online. But probably you can uh, participate. I just switch again to the VScript Live server, and I create a new node. So what I did is actually I copied this part of the survey. So this is just an uh, idea how you can create quizzes uh, or surveys. Okay, this is actually the survey task. So basically I copy this into uh, this part. It's not shown here, the content, because you have to recompile it or you hit Control S. So it's just like, so now it's just we created a new document and there are different ways how you can share this content. So one way, and the easiest way for playing around or testing uh, probably the content of your course 
So you can upload this to uh, Google Kist, uh, GitHub Kist, for example. Uh, you can create collaboration links, but this is now what we added. Data URIs. Uh, it looks strange, but what we did is you create a large URL, and this is actually where the everything is a text file, and the content of this text file is zipped probably or in different formats. So this is longer. Uh, so you have to. This is a data format. This is a text, a plain text. And content and coding is in gzip. So if I want to use this content and publish it to my students probably, I simply have to click on the link and the entire content of this short course is actually put or add within the uh, URL. So that's one idea of how to share a course. And as you've seen, it's always the same. Wherever your course might be, might be stored on GitHub, on Dropbox, on your personal website. The only thing that you do is you go to oh, leascript.github.io if you don't host the website by your own. So you're also free to do this. Uh, course slash question mark and then the URL where your content is actually stored. So and if I open this, it loads the Leascript website uh, with this little survey. So what we can now do, we'll probably just uh, invite you to test. So we are, you see, the QR code is a bit more complex, but it still works. We can create or try to create something like a classroom. So there are different web technologies uh, that we try to support depending on your system. So uh, you can choose between uh, Jitsi, which uses. Uh, it's called WebRTC. Uh, GunDB is a distributed database that also runs offline. So we we just synchronize uh, synchronize our content, our course. So I simply use Gun as a backend. So there's somewhere an open server. You can also host this by your own. Uh, we can create a new room. Probably either you choose them like randomly, uh, or you simply we call it ELA23, and we. Connect. The URL has changed, and you can, if the QR code works, I'll probably maybe you can try. And, and persistent storage is tick. Uh, is not tick because on GunDB you have also the possibility, since it's a database, you can store your content for later. But you can probably open a course, so that's the idea, and add some. Uh, take your own notes if you want to, and store this within your randomly choose a room uh, with your private password or something or invite others uh, so that you have not uh, so one main idea of the classroom was that the state is always synced between the browsers mm -hmm. so uh, there's actually it's not stored everywhere but if we are using GunDB we can also uh, make something like um, uh, not online how to say uh, classroom where probably a teacher looks at one time at the comments of the notes of the results uh, of a student and the students uh, at another time comes back. So yeah, you have to. So question, do you see any changes? Yes. So with multiple users, right? Yeah. Uh, 
So something is. It's okay. So yeah, I can show you the basic idea. Don't know why it's not synced yet. Or syncing. So actually, yeah, okay. The only thing we can try this out later also. Uh, actually, you should now see your shared state. Actually, but I don't know why my uh, laptop isn't connecting at the moment. So I see only a classroom of one. Uh, just probably, probably try the, another browser, sorry. Uh. And, and again, to have the big picture, at the moment we talked about the content and its representation. Now we switched to the learning management system in light. It's just in your browser to offer some class specific um, separations of environments. And here we have the classroom content again. It's a just a um, connection between the browsers of your mobiles, of your computers. And if you leave such a classroom, you take all your information with you. So it's completely um, fine with the European regulations on data. Okay, so this is a bit strange. I don't know what's missing, so we could try to use but another background later, but... So for me it worked when you, you know, type in server, you see the results. Yeah, you see, but the idea is you see, uh, you see the results if you participate with your own data. So ah, that that's... you don't see the of everyone. Yeah, uh, afterwards, but anonymously, uh, a combined version of all the stuff, but I... It's a Something bit disappointing uh, why it's showing only... I don't know what's happening. Because uh, we tested it a couple of times and uh, we used it in the lecture and it worked. But I don't know why it's not working yet. So, okay, we try this out later again. So but I, I guess the idea comes to you. It's an opportunity to have a separate... Um, with a, uh, protected by a password to work with your students. And can you probably switch on the um, classroom in the discussion area? Uh, what do you mean? Um, additional comments and the opportunity to discuss ah. about. So actually you also have something like this chat, if it's working, where you can place also this, uh, actually, if it works, there's any kind of Lea script content. You can do like also quizzes, surveys, questionnaires if you want to. I can directly also copy this. Uh, coding examples or uh, this little nice gallery that we have seen. So just send it and you get this, uh, the same content structure actually, or the, yeah, the same content if you want to. If I'm giving a lecture, mm -hmm. students discuss about the content at this place. And they um, copy additional links on materials, probably explaining some aspects in a better way. They um, reference some movies here and so on. So the classroom is a concept on top of real script to support the actual interaction yeah. with the students at this point. Yeah, of course, the no translate is missing. Yeah, but we get the same quizzes like this. So actually, the idea, whatever you put into your course with the Lear script syntax, you can also use in the chat. So that's the basic idea with some other stuff. And this is the thing that we hope we can teach you today. So we have a tough schedule. But uh, 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 can you elaborate a little bit more on the pedagogical practice in the class? So. You have your students sitting in the rows, and everyone has their laptop. And then you display, um, you know, this presentation, and then you group them into peer groups or so, and they can write each other assignments or add resources uh, to the course. Or um, um, I'm using the script ideas in the basic courses, where we commonly programming or we try to understand the concepts of different programming paradigms. In this way, I write programs or I have a project, project, a 
programs uh, to the world, and then we discuss about. It. And in many cases, no one is wants to talk about. It. But if you ask for some written reviews, then students are much more involved. And hey, in line two, there is a problem. So it's kind of anonymization. Mm -hmm. This is very helpful for non-experts to be part of this lecturing process. So it's, it's a mixture of traditional lectures with some new technical elements helpful to um, catch students from their um, yeah, mm. hesitation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's actually a cool idea. It would also work very well in schools, I think. And it's very helpful, of course, it's an open educational resources. The text is um, public, so students send me pull requests. This means they changed some contents, they probably correct typos, um, edit some uh, new code examples, and explaining me why, hey, it would be helpful due to the fact that. And then I integrate their pieces of code directly to the course, and they are referenced as an additional author. This is, I guess, a cool mm -hmm. feature uh, that helps to motivate the, those students with high experience. Otherwise, they are boring in the of the um, courses. To, um, illustrating that professors, the material of the professors can be improved um, is one piece in this mm -hmm. chain. And due to the fact that our of this integration, many of my materials have 10, 15, 20 uh, of co-authors uh, from the students' side. And so if you have this, also if students, um, they want to show up, so we make a lot of programming tasks, and if we teach coding, so there are some examples, they can uh, run them by their own. And so now we edit this. If there's a classroom open, every piece of, and if it worked, uh, every piece of uh, executable codes can be switched into a collaborative editor. So there will be multiple cursors uh, in this space probably and then you can, one student could paste uh, his or her solution. Or, yeah, in this case, and so you have an open discussion also on this code or whatever it is, music theory or something like this. So. Okay. So this is the idea of our schedule that we had. So the warm up is actually done and we would like to invite you now uh, to directly start uh, with us uh, to try to learn online Lear script, uh, play around with it within, an online, uh, within the online editor that we have seen so far. And the basic idea is that we teach you uh, the basic markdown syntax. So this is not something that we invented. It's an, actually like an international standard and you can also use this if you're using WhatsApp so you can use this notation or if you're uh, using your Moodle and stuff like this so you've always the option to fast create content with this markdown notation. So and then we will want to teach you these the script extensions so the idea is basically at first you learn to write and then you learn to speak or how you uh, create these animations, text-to-speech output if you want to this and uh, how you can create quizzes, galleries and uh, whatever there is. Uh, so and then depending on uh, if there's this uh, lunch, uh, after the lunch, uh, we probably uh, teach you a bit of... so. We're doing this always in the browser, so you can share your own files, actually. But if you want to collaborate with more uh, developers, course designers, content creators with one project, so there's one opportunity that we also use, and this is uh, GitHub. And uh, what we actually do is we create uh, like plugins for different editors. And so there's also for the online GitHub editor and plugins, so you can create Lear script directly, but you can also collaborate with other colleagues and have this as your repository uh, to store your content and uh, publish it directly from there. And it's actually free and open uh, to, used, uh, to be used by everyone. So, so yeah, the classroom will try it out later. And last but not least, uh, we will show you different methods of how you can deliver your content. So, 
as I mentioned, it's actually quite easy. You have to put it onto somewhere into the internet. It could be also in Dropbox or something where you share this link, uh, this data URI as you've seen it. But there is also this possibility like the interplanetary file system this is support, that is supported by a couple of browsers. Or if you want to do it more securely, we demoed this like with a Tor and Onion Share which might be not such a good thing, but uh, not in every country actually, like education is available for free and where the internet is monitored probably like in Afghanistan uh, or other countries. So you can like securely deliver your content via this Tor network if you want to. And uh, you have the possibility to export your content into, we will help you to install the exporter. So there's, um, uh, command line tool actually, but then you can translate your content to a SCORM package, IMF, if you want to PDF. Uh, Android is a bit more difficult to set up. Uh, actually, I can probably can show it on my laptop, but uh, you have to install the yeah, Android SDK and a couple of tools, but then it's actually, this is done, it installs it automatically. Here's yeah, some further help and resources. Uh, if you want to have this, yeah, just a, take a little overview. And these are the materials that we are going through today. So it's always this the script course and the live editor, which is just referring to this uh, markdown document, both in the same way. And to simply create or extend notes or uh, URLs, probably, you can, if you open your browser, and you type in this uh, URL, we will have a collaborative editor. So the first thing that you might open is this yeah, shorted link by the uh, GitHub uh, course. You can directly place it. And the other one is the, probably can be, I'm sorry, you're typing. So, uh, any questions so far? Or mentions something? Um, I would have one question regarding the uh, export in SCORM because typically content would be embedded no? in the, the SCORM. Um, how do you deal with content that's maybe temporarily available somewhere in the web and you have it included and then you export it in your SCORM package? Uh, so if you would, the yeah. question is we just refer to some the external package. content so we, then we just store the uh, reference it's just like if it goes away so or you have to do it manually so that you can also put this download or whatever it is, put it into uh, the same folder and refer to this locally. And then the SCORM exporter will also add this images, videos or whatever it is, or uh, JavaScript sources uh, also within into the SCORM package. So the first thing that we probably go and do is go to the, have you all opened this? So, and then if you, this is our current repository, I just, where all the content is stored on GitHub. Actually, so what we've done now is just had a look at this readme markdown file. So you see it's uh, rendered a bit differently, uh, but it's actually the same. So uh, the same information. GitHub is only able to render actual markdown not handle your script directly due to this fact uh, some of the structural and elements of the iframe and so looks a little bit different but it's helpful to get an overview about the document structure and, and to edit it directly here. so yeah this is just an image of Giphy that we added into it and, and just like it's a little nice to have but probably not the right thing for a ebook or something like this so we've seen this introduction so far this was what are presented also in the same way the images in the script look a bit better and we can go now have you all opened this website okay so then go now to 
clear script just wait a second the live editor so yours might look a bit different I'll paste this uh, so here so you can copy and paste and you should start with an empty uh, project right there's nothing within so you just click on a new node So there's, it's an empty document. There's nothing within. And uh, one thing, if you just like, we'll explain this uh, in a few seconds. This hashtag is actually like a, a header, where some uh, you can call it like my tutorial. So just the idea. If you recompile this, uh, it will generate this simple document. Or you, if you, for 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 beading purposes just control s so and we'll create the same thing so now if you go back to the lia edit now for example there will be this my tutorial this is the latest you can reopen this and the content is stored within your browser that's your personal property uh, if you you can take it with you it's not stored nowhere only on your browser on your device It's references all called the history, all these points, and additionally, many data belonging to specific pages. And the Lear script online editor is one page, and all the content you store there is just available on your computer. So it's so access from the internet. If you go to every course, has this home button, and if you click onto it, so this is the history of all courses that I've probably uh, attended, created, or something visited, and these are stored. If I don't want to use this, you can delete them, but all their states of their quizzes and stuff like this, this is stored within your browser. It's your personal property, and you cannot take it to another browser uh, so far, which is just like locked in into this browser, but you can simply export or uh, reference yeah, the content and share. Yeah. Sorry, just to, to get you down. Uh, how d how did you come, come back? How you create? You started writing on the the new how you wrote my tutorial. Yes, that one. How did you get to? Uh, control S, or you hit this button for compile. Yeah, but uh, how did you get to the live editor? So you typed in ah lierstrip.github.io live editor, and then. It's available on the sorry. Etherpad too. Can you switch to the Etherpad, please? Ah, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, and here we have the link. Ah, uh, the file is over. So just. But it doesn't show anything. So yes, yes, yes. And then you have to click on new, new node. New node. Yes, yes, yes. 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 So just like in the same way, like these courses are stored within your personal index DB, the other ones are also stored, uh, the, the, the courses that you've opened with the Lea script website. And there's uh, to show you how to, you can open another course content and edit this probably, or how you can make a, a copy of it. So you can create, uh, if you go to this website again, to the Lea script main website, we want to edit not here, but in the preview, the content of this tutorial, right? Do you see it? And the only thing that we have to do is just like, we don't want to have this editing page, stuff like this. We want to have the raw content. And there's this raw button. And if you click onto this, the URL changes and you get the entire, this is the URL of the actually of the text file. So this is what we share. And if you copy, this I just click onto it, copy it, go back to my editor, to my latest tutorial. Yeah, you can also copy and paste, of course. Uh, not the URL. <laughs> so this is one method. Uh, you could. Where was it? There was. 
copy and paste the entire content, copy it into your document, and if you hit Control S, so you will have this entire tutorial visible. So you now make a local copy of this document, for example, but what you also can do if you want to refer to only the So another possibility of just like depending on the uh, resolution we, we have now a small resolution it's uh, the uh, table of contents fills the entire screen so but you can also I want to show this quickly uh, just copy the URL I go back to the editor and create something like a I want to refer to an external external resource so you simply copy the URL of this file click on OK you get a new URL. URL. Yeah, and if you load this, it will load the content, but it's actually not stored. You can play around with any document, but this will not be stored, as mentioned here, within your uh, local browser. The first thing you have to do is to make a fork create a local copy of this document. So you are free to explore, to change the tutorial in Dakar, control it, something like this. But if I reload this page, it will restore the entire content. But if you want to work or proceed to work on this document by your own, simply create a new fork. So it's really helpful if I'm checking the course of my colleague. There is a Spanish guy who provided a perfect course on embedded systems. And I load this this course is after some changes um, to the editor and take a view, hey, what, what, what's the most change? Wow, cool simulation and all these things. And then I decide which part I would like to transfer to my course and resolve it as an addition. So yeah, in this way it's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Much and faster than to copy all the uh, entries. From but I have a question. So uh, would that not lead to more and more cascading? And uh, how do you, you know, make sure that the uh, original, maybe author or, or contributor, knows what's going on, but also potentially can embed the improvements that later? Yes, it's, this is an interesting question. Um, we will discuss about the version management, but these are only tools for organizing the process. They do not ensure that the original author is informed about adaptations happen to his original material. Um, yeah, so I, the, I guess this is not working with a live editor, but afterwards with a uh, GitHub method, is probably you can have this uh, assurance that you have multiple authorship, uh, you know who is referring to your document, made some changes, and they can also, uh, it's called a pull back those changes. So you can see, oh, there's improvement, I want to have this in my uh, original document, and you get this uh, new course back, or these updates. So just like it works for software, and software is also just text, and it works in the same uh, case also for these documents or for these online courses. So as you can see, it's just uh, I made the fork, and the URL slightly changed. So this is just an identifier. If you go back, there will always be my uh, tutorial in Dakar. Uh, control S, and now it's updated. So this is just our starting working basis, if you want to. We, this is like uh, control and S, as you've seen, if you make some changes and we'll like recompile those changes, you can always visit them or re review them.
so what's going on and the other one are just like little helpers it's called snippets probably uh, just want to show it to you it just when you need some help about or you're not sure about the syntax or how to do something like this I want to have a bold text for example to make something bold you could type start Leah and it will just give you some examples and you can call like text okay there are a couple of bold text examples and this is a bit tricky I don't know why this is ah. I recompile this okay so now we made some bold text so this is the syntax for this is very bold but in the same way if you want to make a quiz or something like this you just type Leah quiz and we want to make a single choice probably so if you want to have more info then appears this little helper that can be extended that shows more information or an, even an example so compose a single quiz so this is like the syntax and if you just I don't know uh, this one will generate the syntax otherwise this will only add the option but you can always also okay I will use copy this and use this as a working base for uh, later so I can also if I click onto this uh, Leo script single choice so it will add just a little stop and you have generated this quiz and the X always marks the correct position and so but we go to this step by step so this is just a little script syntax and this is just like uh, if you have some question you can always try to Leah audio file uh, audio it will show you some examples some hints and if you hit enter it will uh, add you or generate you the basic syntax so and you are free so uh, this is a, a intended to be a hands-on uh, tutorial we will uh, go through this step by step but you can make yourself some notes some comments into your document and uh, write it down so probably uh, what we did was just a, a we tried to do a minimal explanation but you can just uh, if something is more clear to you uh, in your own words so just uh, write it down it's stored within your document so it's, this will be now your tutorial for yourself that you can refer to it later or you can share this afterwards with your colleagues if you want to you just rewrite it change it or afterwards so the first thing that you might have noticed uh, are you so far so compiling works uh, you can make changes and so the first thing so far you've seen this uh, if I open the table of contents so it's not ordered so this is like the main content so that's tutorial and this markdown should be the next subsection or something like this so as you can see these hashtags uh, define the order or the indentation of your uh, yeah, header in this case and they divide your content into slides so this is one slide this markdown yeah, until up this paragraph will be another so if you want to intent uh, if you want to have the correct uh, order I want to have this paragraph probably to be a sub subsection of the markdown content so what you do is actually this is a, a chapter something like this this is a section like two and this will be a subsection oops that opens so you see paragraph is now smaller mm. can okay. you try it out now? yeah sure okay cool so shall we do a break ah break? okay yeah probably yeah coffee break right is it, are you okay or fine or you want to start or? i don't know so i'm i'm now curious to see this in practice okay Okay, so we make a little break. Make a little break. Okay. Fifty minutes, and afterwards we look Can forward have to see your activities in the code. Mm -hmm. I was actually uh, I couldn't help myself, but I tried with ChatGPT already, and it doesn't give you the code. No, but you, it gives you, you a very nice structure for a course. Yeah, and, and uh, this is the idea. You train 
uh, actually uh, ChatGPT, of course, uh, you can try uh, train it with different syntaxes. This is the syntax for quiz. Okay, if you create a multiple choice quiz, this is the syntax. Mm -hmm. And then you just uh, tell it, okay, I want to have a multiple choice or add some multiple choice a quiz about this uh, uh, content or where it has this uh, issues and stuff like this. And it will generate it for you in the, the script Even syntax. The correct answers and some yeah, the yeah. feedback that when you hit the wrong answer, it provides you. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really